Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So friends, uh, we are now engaging with uh, another interesting unit. Uh, as we all know that changing agrarian structure and the rural developmental concern in rural society, uh, which is the broader theme of uh, the last unit. And within that, we are basically focusing upon unit 19th, that is the changing occupational structure in rural India. Now, uh, this unit, I think if you try to see, it basically will highlight the farm and the non-farm activities in the rural India and also the emerging scenario of the non-farm sector and its significance in the Indian setting. So uh, gradually we will try to see that uh, uh, what we have to learn uh, from this chapter because uh, the discussion that we are having is more towards uh, the understanding of uh, the changing occupational structure in the rural India. But uh, the change in occupation does not mean that uh, suddenly we try to speak about uh, uh, something beyond agriculture. Rather, we have to see that how uh, things are been shifting, uh, that is going to be an important issue. So, initially we will start with the introduction, then we will try to speak about the salient features of the Indian agriculture uh, which has been there and also we will try to see the notion of farm and the non-farm sector and also we try to see the scenario of the farm and the non-farm occupation in India that is going to be an another important issue and also the significance of the non-farm sector. So these are certain things uh, that we will try to highlight and beyond that we will also try to work upon the recent trends of the non-farm employment where we will have the studies based on the evidences from the survey studies and also we have the evidences from the empirical studies that we are going to take up and also we will try to see the significant derivations on the farm non-farm linkages that is going to be an important issue and we will also try to highlight the facilitators of non-farm occupation in terms of occupational diversification and what are its implication in terms of the advantages and the limitations. And finally, we will try to speak about the emerging crisis in the rural India. I think these are the important things uh, uh, which are of concern. Uh, through these particular topics uh, through in this unit uh, and uh, these things which I just highlighted are going to be the major topic of discussions. And uh, uh, ultimately what we have to learn is uh, what is the salient features of the Indian agriculture uh, in the contemporary scenario that is going to be an important issue. Then the diversification of the rural occupation uh, that is going to be an, another important aspect then the agricultural strategy pursued by the government of India through time that is going to be an important issue. Then the notion of farm and the non-farm occupation in India, what are the major non-agricultural establishment in the rural India that is also going to be important. We will also try to highlight the trends of participation of labor in the rural non-farm uh, employment that is going to be an important issue and also the significance of the non-farm sector. Uh, I think uh, these are certain important things uh, that we have to list down. Uh, just for an introductory understanding, it is common in the rural studies work uh, to list the caste of a particular region uh, with some account of traditional occupation of each and also an analysis of how these groups interact with one another in the production and exchange of uh, goods and services, uh, especially the work by William H. Weiser in his book, The Hindu Jajmani System that came in 1936 was the first to describe in detail how such goods and services are exchanged in the rural Indian villages. Under this system, each caste group within a village is expected to give certain standard services to the families of other caste. For example, a khati that is a carpenter repairs the tools, a nai that is a barber cuts the hair but they do not necessarily perform these services for everyone. Each man works for a particular family or a group of families uh, with 
which he has a hereditary ties. His father worked for the same families before him and his son will continue to work for them, the occupation or services being determined by the caste. A major function of the Jajmani system is to assure a stable labor supply for the dominant agricultural caste in a particular region by limiting the mobility of the lower caste, especially those who assist in the agriculture work. Thus, the traditional rural society is marked by both the natural economy and peasant economy model of the rural society. So, we have the natural economy and we have the peasant economy, both the things are important. A model of agrarian society that is frequently applied to the rural India is model of the peasant economy. Peasant economies are held to be pre-capitalist in the sense that in peasant societies, labor is not separated from the means of production. It is part and parcel of the production system. Nonetheless, peasant societies represents a more advanced form of agrarian society than do the natural economies. Peasant economies do not stand isolated and self-sufficient, rather they reside within the state system and within the economies that contain cities, industries and manufacturing. They are linked to these other sectors through the relation of political domination and the economic exchange. Thus, the agrarian institution represents the compromises and adaptation equally as often they represent the imposition from above by more powerful external agents. A fall in agriculture population is known to cause significant reorganization of farming as economies move from subsistence to the commercial farming. Peasants move from maximizing output per unit of land to maximizing the output per head. Farm size becomes larger and agriculture populace is dominated by the large farmers. There is an acute shortage of labor driving mechanization and finally, the gap between the farm and the non-farm income widens, the government intervenes to restore the parity. This is the scenario which is there with regard to uh, the rural setting. Uh, according to the economist G. K. Chadda in 2002 in the work, the rural non-farm employment in India, what does the recent, uh, uh, recent experience teach us, uh, which was published in the Indian Journal of Labor Economics, volume 45. The necessity for expanding the network of non-farm that is RNF activities for the rural development, improvement of employment, productivity and earning and poverty reduction have been gaining significance in terms of policy in the developing world. And what was once looked upon as a passive side route for employment growth is advocated as a central plank of rural development strategy. It is no more a doubt that in present economies typically characterized by demographic pressures and an ever increasing land man imbalance, agriculture alone cannot provide the ultimate solution to the rural underemployment and poverty, other essential commodities available to the consumer at the reasonable low price. The national policy on seed development that was announced in 1988 seems to have inaugurated the significant new trends in the globalization of Indian agriculture. The policy permitted entry of the private enterprise in the seed production and development, thereby encouraging the numerous private enterprise, both national and multinationals to launch ambitious plans in the production of seeds, horticulture, floriculture, poultry, animal husbandry and the meat processing to cater to the both domestic and the for foreign markets. So, these are the new avenues which are coming up with regard to the non-farm sectors which are growing in the uh, rural areas. Now, let us try to see that what are the salient features of Indian agriculture, because Indian agriculture is not simply the uh, crop production, rather it involves many important aspects. So, let us try to see what is the, what are the salient features of the Indian agriculture. Agriculture is the core sector of Indian economy and is the main occupation of millions of peasants who follow the mixed crop and the livestock farming. It continues to remain the principal source of livelihood for the majority of household uh, India. Agriculture sector also sustain the food security of the larger population of this country, which has increased from 361 billion to 
1180 million between 1951 and 2010. No doubt agriculture in India is the main occupation of millions of peasants who follow mixed crop and livestock farming. The bulk of farming units comprises of small land holdings with the preponderance of owner cultivators. The number of operation holding has been increasing at a fast rate due to the population pressure and also due to the lack of adequate employment opportunities outside the agriculture sector. During the three decades between 1960 to 1961 and 1990 to 91, the net area available for cultivation increased by about 7.5 percent, but the number of holdings during the same period increased by about 218 percent. Because of this, the average size of land holding declined from 2.69 hectares during 1961 to 1.55 hectares during 1990-91. During the next decades, the net zone area in the country showed a small decline, whereas the number of land holding increased by 13 percent to reach a level of 120.82 millions. Consequently, the proportion of marginal holdings of the size below 1 hectare reached 63 percent of the total holdings during 2000-2001, while 82 percent holdings were below 2 hectares. Now, these are the facts which have been highlighted by uh, S. Ayappan and Ramesh Chand in 2010 in uh, Think India Quarterly and the title was Indian Agriculture and Economic Perspective in Volume 13. They further say that owing to the diverse agroecologies that are conducive to the produce, uh, conducive to produce a wide range of food and non-food agri commodities, Indian farmers have adjusted production profiles in line with the emerging opportunities, which can be seen from the change in the composition of output of this sector between the crops and the livestock and share of different crop group in the value of the crop output. An analysis of the composition of the agricultural output shows the increase in the share of the livestock output over the years. Livestock constituted less than 15 percent of the total agriculture output in 1970-71. And in the next three and a half decades, we try to find that its share increased to about 27 percent. Significantly, the changes have also been experiences in the composition of the crop output. Cereals continue to dominate the crop output uh, through though their share has followed a sharp decline from the close to 44 percent during 1970-71 to 30 percent during 2007 and 2008. The share of fruits and vegetables in the total value of the crops increased from 15.5 percent to 25.7 percent in the same period. So, we try to see that uh, according to agricultural statistics at a glance by Ministry of Agriculture, Government of India, New Delhi, the series on the growth rate indicate that different phases of growth coincide with the different phase of agricultural policy and technology. In the pre-green revolution period, the net area under cultivation increased from 118 million hectares to 138 million hectares. Despite the large expansion in the area, the agriculture experienced 2.66 percent average annual growth rate. The adoption of high yielding variety seeds during the late 1960s led to the substantial increase in the production of the two principal crops namely the wheat and paddy which raised output growth to 2.76 percent during the first 15 years following the onset of the green revolution. Around 1980-81, the improved agri agricultural technology spread to the several other regions leading to the diversification of the agricultural economy. This resulted in the further exploration of the growth of agricultural output. This period also witnessed the sharp acceleration in the growth rate of the non-agricultural sector. So, after mid-1990s, the growth rate of agricultural output declined sharply. According to the sem uh, National Sample Survey Organization that is NSSO Employment and Unemployment Survey in 2011 and 12. 36.4 percent of the Indian population was active in the labor force. Of the total population, 
35.4% was employed and 2.74% were unemployed. About 45% of the Indian workers were engaged in agriculture and the related activities, whereas in 2009 and 10, it was just about 50%. This is the first time that less than half the working population is engaged in agriculture and the related activities. The proportion of the working population engaged in the sec secondary and the tertiary sector is growing with 24% of them in secondary sector and 30% in the service sector in 2011 and 12. According to uh, Mano Jatav and Suchitra Sen uh, in 2013 and the work was uh, drivers of non-farm employment in rural India evidences from the 2009 uh, 10 NSSO round uh, that was published in Economic and Political Weekly. Uh, they said that the landless are more likely to join the non-farm sector compared to the one that own land. The distress linked development of rural non-farming sector is further supported by the result that the scheduled caste are more likely to enter to the rural area of the non-farm sectors compared to both the OBCs and the general categories, though the scheduled tribes are less likely to do so as compared to the social groups other than the general category. So, I think these are the things uh, which has been highlighted by uh, Sain and Jatav. In spite of the technological innovation and modernization, the major challenges faced by the Indian agricultural sector are, first thing is despite the tremendous expansion in the major, medium and the minor irrigation, only 40 percent of the cultivated area has access to agriculture irrigation and the rest remains dependent on rainfall. That is the first limitation. Second is only one crop is cultivated on most of the area, more than one crop is raised only on the third of the cultivated area. Uh, next is that it is ex excessively crowded due to the population pressure. The availability of the cultivated land per workers remains low which has actually declined from 1.22 hectares during the 1950-51 to 0 0.77 hectares in 1990-91 and to 0 0.60 hectares during 2000-2001. The development policies and technologies for this sector must be customized to the characteristics and needs of the small holder agriculture that is largely the rain fed. Now let us try to understand that what is the notion of farm and the non-farm sector uh, which we try to see as an important sector in the domain of the rural society. We have used the term farm and the non-farm sectors uh, earlier also. Uh, before moving ahead, let us clarify the meaning of the two significant terms. The World Bank in the year 1978 mentions the difficulties in clear-cut classification of agricultural and the non-agricultural activities of or the rural urban categories because of the lack of well-established and consistent set of definition. The overlapping is partially uh, due to the existence of continuum between the rural areas and the cities and therefore a full range of farm and non-farm activity is not possible. The interim report of the study group on the non-farm sector in the year 1992 reviews a variety of definitions used in India by organizations like Planning Commission, the National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development that is NABARD and the Department of Small Scale Industries. Uh, they have reviewed these definitions. It broadly defines uh, the non-farm sectors activities as all non-agricultural economic activities that is agricultural processing, household and the non-household manufacturing, constructions, transport, trade and all kinds of services in the rural areas and the rural towns. It also advocates the inclusion of activities such as animal husbandry and fisheries which are practiced on a commercial basis rather than on the subsistence activity by a rural household. The report further comments on a variety of individuals constituting the non-farm sectors. These individuals can be classified under the different categories such as the wage earners like potters and the artisans working for the uh, wages, self-employment producers like tea shop owners, vendors or the producer entrepreneurs like the owner of the food processing unit the master weavers, traders who apply the raw materials, uh, supply the raw materials and buy the finished goods 
and the owners <coughs> of the large manufacturing or the service uh, business. These facts are highlighted by Kantikar, uh, Ajit Kantikar in 1994 uh, in his work Entrepreneurs and Micro Enterprises in Rural India which was published in the Economic and Political Weekly in February 26. In the farm sectors, self-employment loosely indicates the cultivators, while casual laborers primarily including the agricultural laborers. Thus, self-employment in the farm sector is more of a privileged occupation. In the non-farm sector, however, this is not very clear. Self-employment in the non-farm sector has a more complex connotation and can commonly include very small economic enterprises that may just be breaking even. The rural non-farm sectors, though primarily located in the rural areas, is not exclusive to it. The rural population working in the urban areas or in both the rural and the urban areas would also include in the larger ambit of the rural non-farm uh, work as pointed out by Manoj Jatav and Suchitra Sen in 2013. So, the farm activity means the agriculture activities and the non-farm activities which are used synonymously with the non-agricultural activities. These are the two alternative approaches to define the rural non-farm activities. The first is the, loco the locative approach in which the primary criteria is that the rural non-farm activities perform in the location which falls within a designated rural areas. The second is based on the linkage approach where an industrial enterprise generate the significant development linkage with the rural areas. In India, the land man ratio is decreasing, employment elasticity is in agriculture has not only declined but it has reached almost zero. In this situation, the rural non-farm sector is generally perceived as the answer for tackling to the twin problem of employment and poverty in rural India. From this perspective, the determinants of employment in the rural non-farm sectors has been assessed and the rural non-farm sector includes all economic activities including the household and the non-household manufacturings, handicrafts, processing, repairs, construction, mining, acquiring, transport, trans trade, communication, community and personal services and many others in the rural areas. The rural non-farm activities thus play an important role to provide supplementary employment to the small and the marginal farm households and reduce the income inequalities and the rural urban migration. These facts were been highlighted by A.K. Mukhopadhyay, D. Uh, Gangopadhyay and uh, Swasti Nayak in the famous work The Non-Farm Occupation in the Rural India that was published in 2008. Now let us try to see that what is the scenario of farm and the non-farm occupation in India. As discussed earlier that all activities other than agriculture and its associated enterprise are treated as the non-farm activities. They would include the issue of mining, querying, manufacturing, ut <coughs> manufacturing utilities and the construction under the secondary sectors and the trade, hotels, banking, real estate under the tertiary sector. Employment size of the rural non-farm sector according to the NSS 55th report Government of India in 2001 and also in the subsequent report has pointed out that uh, in rural India the proportion of the male worker engaged in the prim primary sector has been steadily declining from 77.5% in 1983 to 74.6% in 1987-88 and to 71.4% in 1999 and 2000. On the other hand, the proportion of their employment in the secondary, in the secondary tertiary and the total uh, non-farm sectors have witnessed a steady increase happily right until the recent times. In particular, their excessive dependence on the agriculture as a source of livelihood has steadily been melting down and their employment base has been clearly witnessed as a modest degree of diversification. All thorough the preceding three decades uh, with the 1990s being not an exception. In particular, their base of non-farm employment has been expanded from the low as 22.5% in 1983 and to 28.6% in 1999 and 2000. According to Government of India Sarvekshan <coughs> in the volume 19th, 
the farm and the non-farm breakup of the rural workers for each of the 17 major states for the year 1983, 1993, 94 and 1999-2000 is as follows. The proportion of the rural person engaged in agriculture including the field crop operation, plantation, livestock, forestry and fishing continued to decline fairly noticeably. During the post-1993 years in Assam, Bihar, Himachal Pradesh, Kerala and Uttar Pradesh. The decline did not occur most uh, in most other states, but it was not so significant in Andhra Pradesh, Haryana, Jammu Kashmir, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Punjab, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu and West Bengal. It is only in Gujarat, Karnataka and Maharashtra that the declining proportion of the pre-1993 year converted itself into an increasing proportion. On the whole, it is clear that the process of structural transformation of the rural workforce that was steadily tilting in the favor of non-agricultural jobs during the decade preceding the economic reforms. Both for the rural male and the female workers in most of the states, either the, they got reversed in the some states or witnessed a halting pace in others. Only in few states, the noticeable shift from agriculture continued even after the reform arrived. This has been highlighted by G. K. Chadda in his work uh, Rural Non-Farm Employment in India uh, that was published in Indian Journal of Labor Economics in 2002. John Dave Miller in 1978 uh, in his work uh, The New Economics of Growth, A Strategy for India and the Developing World which was published from Cornell University Press has argued that the rural diversification in India is the outcome of technology induced growth in the agricultural sector. He illustrates the presence of production and consumption linkage of agriculture with the non-farm sector. On the production side, a growing agriculture requires input of fertilizer, seeds, herbicides, pumps, sprayers, equipments and the repair service either produced or distributed by the non-farm enterprises. It is realized that the rising agriculture productivity is instrumental in inducing a structural transformation of the rural farm economy. This process of growth in the rural non-farm sector is evident from the state of Punjab where the dependence of labor on agriculture decreased substantially following the technology led growth in the agriculture. So the transformation of the non-farm sector in Punjab presents a similar example. Increasing demand of agricultural labor has resulted in the higher farm wages which led to the decline in the low return household manufacturing and the parallel rise in the high return modern small factories and the service industries. In their much cited assessment of early literature examining the employment pattern evident in the national census and NSS data, uh, Visaria and Basant has summarized the key national trends of participation of labor in the rural non-farm uh, employment. First is the share of the non-farm activities of the total labor force has increased uh, since 1970s and is more clearly observed in the male rather than the female workers. This increase has mainly come from the tertiary sector that is another important point. Then the majority of the increase in the non-farm employment has been a consequence of the increase in the proportion of the casual non-agriculture workers rather than the full-time employment or the increase in the number of rural non-farm enterprises. And also the bulk of seasonal fluctuations in the rural non-farm employment can be explained by the changes in the employment structure of the rural casual labor who shifts between the agriculture and the non-agricultural work. And finally, we try to see that the casual agriculture worker report has found the incidence of the non-agriculture works in the secondary capacity rather than the previous one. And we also try to find out that participation in the uh, rural non-farm employment is inversely proportioned to the size of whole uh, land holdings. So no doubt among the nine major states, the agriculture remains the largest sectors in the economy, but its contribution to the total GDP during 1950-51 was more than 55%. Over times, as it happens in a developing economy, the share of the agriculture in the national output start declining. Between 1980-81 and 2000-2001, the share of the agriculture in the national income declined from 35.7% to 23.3%. However, the workforce engaged in agriculture in the same period 
witnessed a very small decline from 60.5 percent to 58.4 percent. During the last one decade, uh, some adverse trends have been emerged in Indian agriculture. The per capita income for the population dependent on agriculture is not, not growing. So, the disparities between per workers income in agriculture and non-agriculture are widening. Inter-religious uh, regional variations in agriculture productivity are high and have been rising. Moreover, the natural source base of agriculture is shrinking and there are signs of degradation of land and over exploitation of water in the country which has been highlighted by Ayapa and Chan in the year 2010. The growth of rural non-farm sector employment has occurred all over India, but has a very highly uneven policy. It is highest in Kerala, West Bengal and Tamil Nadu and it is lowest in Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh followed by Uttarakhand, Karnataka, Gujarat and Maharashtra as per the World Bank report of 2010. Until 2004, the growth in the non-farm jobs have come primarily from the increase in service, transport and construction. In 1983, uh, close to 40 percent of the rural non-farm jobs were in the manufacturing sector. Despite the continued growth of rural manufacturing, this share has declined to just a little above 30 percent in 2004 and 5. In 1983, the social service and the trade, the transport and communication both generated about 26 percent of the non-farm jobs. The social services have since then declined to about 18 percent of the job, while the trade, transport and the communication have grown rapidly to about 33 percent. In 1983, construction was by far the smallest sectors with a share of 10 percent only. Since then, it has grown the fastest and now generates close to 19 percent of the rural non-farm jobs. The high level of rural construction has visually transformed village all over the India with much better village infrastructure and housing. Over time, the employment growth in the non-farm wage sector has accelerated while the growth or in the average earning has decreased. These two trends have cancelled each other and we try to see that growth in the total non-farm earning has been constant uh, which has been highlighted by the World Bank in the year 2010. Uh, tracing the changes in the relative contribution to the pool of rural, ho rural household income according to the source of income broadly highlights the features of rural transformation including the impact on poverty. The data estimates suggest that during 2004 and 2005, the non-farm oriented income share is the largest at 46.1 percent followed by the farm oriented income of 45.1 percent and 8.8 percent from the other residual sources. The non-farm income shares has increased 11 percent points over the 34.8 percent recorded in the year 1993-94. Lastly, in the rural India, uh, social and the religious affiliations have unique associations with the occupations uh, which we have discussed earlier. Workers belonging to the scheduled castes and the scheduled tribes are more likely to work on agricultural wage workers much more than the other backward ca classes and the Muslims in comparison with the high caste which is excluded category. It is the only high caste Hindus who are at least likely to work as agricultural wage earners. It is important to note that the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes are less able to work in the non-farm self-employment such as business and artisanship, whereas Muslims are dominantly more likely to work as a self-employment. The scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes are more likely than the OBCs and Muslims to work on regular salaried employment. This can be attributed to the success of the reservation policy, an affirmative action of the government that promotes the public employment as a matter of right and on the priority assurance. One important aspect however is that the, that emerges from this model is the fact that Muslims are by far the most diversified community in India in terms of choosing practically all types of employment compared to the farming. More so into the non-agricultural wages and the self-employed employment activities. <coughs> the OBC on the other hand are dominantly cultivators followed by choosing the wage work of both kinds. These things are highlighted by Abul Salah Sharif 
in 2009 in his work the rural income and employment diversity in india during the year 1994 and 2005 and that was published in the journal of developing societies now let us try to see what are the significance of the non farm sector uh, that is going to be an important issue to understand the nature of opportunity that exists in the rural india in the post liberalization period it is important to analyze the relative importance of the pull and the push factor that mobilizes the rural workers to enter into the different uh, economic activities. The correlation coefficient between the growth rate of non-farm and farm employment suggests that whenever farm employment declines, the employment in the rural non-farm sector expands. Uh, according to Sharad Bhomik, uh, on in 2002 on the work employment diversification in the uh, rural India, in the Journal, Indian Journal of Labor Economics, he tries to point out that uh, uh, in most of the Indian state as well as at the all India level, the non-farm employment grew more significantly in period that witnessed a sharp decline in the farm employment. So, the significance of the rural non-farm sector can hardly be denied when seen in relation with the increasing saturation in the growth of agricultural employment and the growing rural urban divide in the globalizing India. The generation of employment in the rural non-farm sector is important not only with respect to poverty elevation, economic growth and rural development, but it is also known to enhance the sustainability of the use of natural resources and food security in the rural areas and which has been pointed out by Jatav and Sain in 2013. The point to be uh, noted over here and which has been highlighted uh, with regard to the modern agriculture which is based on the strong forward and the backward linkage with the industries and the non-agriculture sectors, some of which can be seen uh, as available in the rural areas are been highlighted by J. W. Mellor as follows. The significance of the farm non-farm linkage directly or indirectly can be visualized in different ways. Uh, first thing of course can be an increase in the farm income st stimulate the demand for the wide variety of consumer goods some of which might be produced by the local non-farm economy. A growing agriculture demand production inputs that are either produced or distributed by the local non-farm enterprises. Rising agriculture productivity and wages raise the opportunity cost of the labor in the non-farm activities including uh, inducing a shift in the comparison of non-farm activities out of the very labor intensive unit. Employment growth in the farm sectors have not been in connaissance with the employment growth in general. A planned strategy of rural non-farm development may prevent many rural people from migrating to the urban industrial and the commercial centers. Similarly, when the economic base of the rural economy extends beyond agriculture, the rural uh, urban economic gaps are bound to get narrower along with the salutary effect in many other aspects associated with the life and aspirations of the people. The rural industries are generally less capital intensive and more labor absorbing. Rural industrialization has significantly spin off for agriculture development as well. Uh, the rural industrialization has significant uh, uh, spill off which we have highlighted and also we try to see that the rural income distribution is much less unequal in areas where a wide network of non-farm avenues of employment exist. And finally, the rural non-farm economy in recent time is been considered as an effective strategy for decentralization of the economic activities to the rural India and giving a halt to the migration of people to the urban centers. Now with regard to the recent trends of the non-farm employment, uh, what are the various scenarios which are happening in India? Uh, we can have uh, at the first stage the evidences from the various survey studies. Uh, agriculture development and the commercializations are assumed positively influencing the growth pattern and the structure of the non-farm sectors in general and especially to the expansion of the rural manufacturing activities in particular. The findings of a large number of studies have revealed that there is a positive relationship between the growth of agriculture productivity and the non-agriculture employment across the regions of the country. These are highlighted by A. Vaidnath. Uh, in the year 1986 and also by D. Jayaraj in 1994. According to uh, Jha uh, 2005 on his work, the rural non-farm employment in India, 
submitted to the Ministry of Agriculture Government of India. Uh, the employment in the rural sectors uh, which is associated mostly with the agriculture has stagnated during the 1990s. Considering the increased pressure on land, there exists the limited scope for increasing employment in the agriculture so that the employment in the non-farm sector becomes an important option. Studies also suggest that with the process of development, the share of the non-farm income and employment in the total income and employment of the rural households increase in the developing countries. A combination of farm and the non-farm income at the household level provides a resilience against the adverse situations in either of the sectors, though agriculture is known for more frequent adversities. There are also evidences to show that the productivity and profitability in the non-farm sector is generally higher than in the farm sectors as the average wages and the working condition that obtain in the non-farm sectors as highlighted by uh, Fisher Mahajan uh, in the work in 1998 on the forgotten sector. A great reliance on the non-farm sectors would therefore provide a demand pull to the rural economy and also ensure the welfare for the rural workers. The growth in agriculture is expected to influence positively the growth patterns and expansion of the non-agricultural enterprises by way of supplying the adequate raw material, creating a great demand for various inputs and allied services raising to the local and external demands for consumption goods and creating the possibilities for generating the surplus for its further investment on different rural non-farm activities, especially in activities relating to the processing and trade. Expectations are that the expansion of the non-farm activities so as to raise the income of the rural household will lead to the uh, lead to attract the surplus labor force of agriculture to turn into the non-farm activities. In fact, the unemployment, the unemployed labor force and those are now no way engaged in agriculture will also find the opportunities to get employment in the non-agriculture activities. Since the early 1970s, the attention has been paid to the significance of the non-farm sectors in the rural Indian economy. The linkage literature launched by John Miller in the early 1970s originated with the reference to the rural Indian economy and has emphasized the intimate relationship between the agricultural and the non-agricultural sectors in the rural areas. As a result of emerging green revolution technologies, Miller saw a virtuous cycle emerging whereby increase in agricultural productivity and thus the income of farmers would be magnified by multiple linkages with the non-farm sectors. The employment patterns in these non-farm sectors based on the national sample survey data and census data has been carefully surveyed by Visaria and Vasant in 1993. This type of analysis is constrained by definitional and comparability issues associated with the major data source on employment patterns. Nonetheless, the study documents the clear increase in the share of non-agricultural employment in the rural workforce during the 1980s, with the trend more clearly evident among males than among the female workers. In addition, the evidence appears to point out to a rapid expansion of the tertiary sector employment rather than of the secondary sector employment and that the bulk of employment growth is of casual rather than the permanent nature. We also try to find that uh, a significant contribution has been made with regard to concentrating largely on the role of government and associated formal institutions on the government policies of regulation, promotions and credit and the institutional context of such policies in the formulation and execution. They are generally critical of the role of government and its agencies in terms of rural employment and advocate a shift in its role from regulator of the micro environment to the provider of enabling a market friendly environment of a more developed infrastructure and focus the promotional inputs. This study is complemented by a number of micro studies that indirectly refer to the impact of governmental programs and policies on the uh, rural non-farm <coughs> sectors of which credit is most commonly discussed. Uh, this has been highlighted that uh, the rural non-farm sector has been largely neglected by the Indian policymakers 
as a residual subsector that falls between the agriculture and the industrialization. The traditional policy approach is based on the narrow perspective of the rural non-farm economy promoting the cottage uh, scale units in the villages uh, such as the individual weavers and the potters. This has been the strategy of the Khadi and the Village Industries Commission, a major player and the IRDP, the national largest poverty elevation scheme which targets that 40 percent of the its loan on the industry service and the business should be given. Uh, Fisher uh, in his work has argued that this reflects the widespread political economy of the non-farm sectors where traditional rural livelihood employ the large number of rural workers and thus important as a sort of a world bank. Now, we try to see the evidences uh, which are based from the empirical studies and we try to find out that the villages in India where the life was once portrayed as unchanging and static had in recent decades seen a profound change. The twin shekels that one decided matters for India's villages are caste and agriculture no longer exercise their vigorous hold, while a break in the caste rigidness has fostered the greater fluidity in the occupational choice. Agricultural stagnation has ensured the constant march in increasing numbers of employable people in the villagers, uh, uh, villages towards the urban areas. In contrast, G. K. Karant in the year 1987 in his work The New Technology and the Traditional Rural Institutions has highlighted in the Karnataka village that the institution of Jajmani relations had adapted itself uh, to suit the changing needs of the people both in the past and the recent years. Although sericulture brought an increased uh, monetization to the agrarian economy of uh, the village, it may seem that it did not result in the erosion of the traditional attitude of mutual dependence and obligations between the different agrarian categories argued. An examination of judgment relations in the context of new technology, namely the sericulture shows that the latter was not significantly affected one of the traditional form of rural institutions. On the contrary, it has kept some of the service specialists relatively busy uh, throughout the years. Along this side, the analysis of the national representative large sample survey data has shown the longer traditions in India of the village level and the regional studies. Many village studies noted an expansion of the non-agricultural employment wiser and wiser in 1971, for instance, has observed the emergence of the tea stall by the bus stand and a new bicycle and the tractor repair shop. T. S. Satistin in the work South India Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow in the year 1973 reports on the movement of entrepreneurs to the tertiary sectors in 1970s, uh, uh, the shops and the cattle trading post, cane crashers, rice mills emerged uh, which did not exist earlier. Uh, even M. H. Nivas noted the investment in the bus lines uh, while uh, <coughs> Ashwin Seth and A. Tanka in the 1992 on the longitudinal analysis of the structural chain in the North Indian village comments on the band playing as a local speciality of growing importance to the resident in the Uttar Pradesh village. These observations indicate an expansion of employment opportunities which often accompany the contradiction of the traditional services. The new labor market and the self-employment opportunities tend to be rather caste heterogeneous. Thus, compensating at least in part for the contradiction in market for the traditional labor services. The village study evidences suggest that the all off farm labor market opportunities are an important means of offsetting the declines or the high variance in the income. Uh, we also try to see that uh, village studies indicates the expansion of the non farm employment uh, can also give have a negative side. Uh, one of the most alarming uh, findings in many village studies has been a decline in the female male ratio over time. Uh, like in Karimpur village in Uttar Pradesh, uh, Susan Wardley and D. Burr has spoken noticed a declining female male ratio observed among the Jati caste. They interpreted this as a growing negative valuation of uh, female of women and link it to the rising instance in the off farm employment outside the village of Jati men. Uh, in Karimpur, uh, female farm workers are not generally hired independently of their husband women now have fewer employment and income earning opportunities. 
They observe a similar decline in the female male ratio among the jatavs over time and suggest it may be linked to the absence of expansion in the female labor participation and a growing identification of the disadvantaged caste with the patriarchal norms of privileged caste. Simultaneously, uh, the expansion of the non-farm economy appears to have influenced the agricultural wages in the rural India. Until recently, the secondary data said uh, uh, C. T. Kurin has observed in 1980s uh, that the real wages in rural India showed no significant upward trends. However, evidence now suggests that an upward trend did happen, especially uh, in most regions of India. And we try to find out that the green revolution uh, has indicated that the new agricultural machinery was displacing the hired labor in the paddy cultivations, real wage rates in the agriculture actually has uh, grown high as a result of the increase of farm employment and the consequent tightening of the village labor market. So, these are the changes which are been visible in the rural India. Now, what are the significant derivations on the farm non-farm linkages? Uh, let us try to see that the linkage between the farm and the non-farm sectors are going to be an important issues in rural India. Uh, we can see the small scale industry activity in the rural areas as widespread. We can also see the employment level in the non-farm sector appears to be growing at least up to the 1990s. The village studies indicate that access to the regular non-farm job is positively correlated with the individual and the household characteristics. Uh, owing to the growth of non-farm sector, uh, women have shown significant increasing uh, concentration on agriculture contributing towards the progressive feminization of agriculture. And also because of accelerating growth of non-farm sector, the sharp divergence in the labor productivity between the agriculture and the non-agriculture has now result, not resulted in much sharpening uh, of the income divide. So, I think uh, these are certain observations uh, which are going to be crucial in terms of significance. Now, let us see what are the facilitators of non-farm occupational diversification and what are its implications. Now, if you try to see that what are the uh, push factors for adoption for the adoption of the non-farm occupation in the rural society and these things are been highlighted by Jata Van Sen in 2013 uh, with regard to the rural non-farm sectors. Now, what are the issues which uh, motivates or which tries to uh, facilitate the non-farm occupation diversification? Uh, first is the percentage of the rural household having the no land for cultivation that is first important push factor. Then we have population pressure on cultivation land in the rural areas. We have the rural dependency ratio that is another important aspect. We have the uh, rural unemployment rate, usual unemployment rate that is another important issue. We have the level of urbanization that is another important aspect and we have the average size of rural land in cultivation, orchards and plantation in hectares that is another important issues and also we have the level of rural literacy. Now, these reflects the facilitators for occupational diversification in the rural India. However, the shift towards the rural non-farm sectors can have both advantage and limitation for the people to the region and the state. Let us discuss about the advantages of the rural non-farm uh, <coughs> farm, uh, employment. Uh, basically, we try to see that there are institutional basis for the rural non-farm sectors in India, especially these includes the uh, secure property rights, a well developed financial system with preferential access to credit for the sectors, supporting the institutions such as KVIC, uh, State Khadi Board, Small Industries Development uh, uh, Bank of India, State Industrial Corporations, policies and programs promoting the linkage with the agriculture, especially the agro industries domestic marketing channels for the rural non-farm production as well as the government supports in export promotions. The institutional mechanism for a rapid growth of rural non-farm sector are already in place. Now, what are the limitations of the rural non-farm uh, employment? First is the poor infrastructure uh, that is going to be an important issue. Then we have the regulatory restrictions on the small, uh, small scale sectors that is another important issue, quality of manpower that is again constraint. Then we also have the forward and the backward linkages that is also going to be an important issue. Now, these things are basically leading to the new forms of crisis in the rural India, which we try to see in terms of the emerging crisis in the rural India. Uh, Dipankar Gupta has rightly pointed out 
if the villages is really to mainstay of India's economy, then what would require is certain set of policy prescriptions that would concentrate agriculture. But if the agrarian character of the village is fast changing, then it would be certainly inspire a significant shift in the perspective, especially when thinking in the developmental terms. It is realized that the volumity of labor has increased, uh, increased considerably under the globalization because of the volatility, <coughs> volatility of the global market does not ensure the stable jobs to the workers and the increased competition in the domestic labor market results in the closer downsizing and restructuring of the units. And we sometimes try to see it in terms of the risk society in the rural areas. As evident in the countryside, a significant number of farmers are also committing suicides in the various parts of India, uh, which is the, because of the growing agrarian crisis. The crisis is further related to the structural transformation induced by globalization and liberalization and resulting forms of scarcities or shortage uh, like uh, the prices. Uh, growth and resources. The participation of the rural workers in the non-farm sectors have gone up since 1983, though there has been the declaration of the growth in these sectors in the most recent peer, uh, period under the consideration. So, we try to see that uh, these are the changes which are happening in terms of the agrarian crisis. According to the 2008 World Development Report on Agriculture, the more enterprising peasant farmers are expected to upgrade themselves technologically to be able to integrate into the market of high value production, though the fast developing global agri supply chains are going to be drastically different. Those who cannot make up to this high ends of market will have to find a way out of agriculture and to the rural non farm sectors or to migrate to the urban sectors. Uh, this has been highlighted. So, we can ultimately say that the small uh, holder agriculture has been going through the major crisis in the last decades uh, in all almost all the developing countries. And we also try to see that there is a shift of de agronizing peasant household to the non farm activities, uh, which is an indication of uh, the crisis which are manifold which we have discussed earlier. We also try to see that the rural non farm sector is increasing playing an important role in the development of the rural areas in Asia. But we have to see that what are the possible outcome. It is observed that the rural urban economic gaps and many other aspects associated with the lives and aspirations of the people are bound to get narrower when the economic base of the rural economy extends beyond agriculture. It is much more likely for the rural people to see, assimilate and adopt the urban work patterns and high earning expectation when their own non-farm sector is expanding. So, I think uh, these are the things uh, that one has to really see efforts are needed to identify the appropriate and the effective institutional vehicles for the development of the non-farm sectors, policies and interventions for creating the employment opportunities. In this regard, the role of the government is crucial, especially in the provision of the necessary infrastructure and other support, uh, support services in the country. It is also vital to improve the marketing links between the village entrepreneurs and the larger business firms located in the towns and the cities and such strategic alliance or partnership can contribute to the sustainability of the small villages and the tiny enterprises in the rural areas. Other important consideration that need to be focused on may include the human resource development that is the need of the hour, the financial and the credit facilities, the research and development which is again going to be crucial and the women's participation with a view to making the activities self-sustaining in the changing competitive environment. So, I think uh, these are certain things uh, which we have to see, especially when we try to see the diversification of uh, uh, the rural India. We try to see that uh, uh, now we have the diversity uh, in terms of the non-farm activities, but the important thing is that uh, what are the advantages and the disadvantages of these things, how much our rural society is viable with regard to the understanding of these issues. Now, if we have to really see that they can overcome these challenges, then we can expect that these changing uh, uh, India in terms of the new occupations are going to be fruitful. So, friends, I think uh, this is where we have to locate the sort of diversification of occupation in the rural India and that will help us in understanding that in which trend our uh, rural India is growing. So, with these uh, discussions in mind, let us try to work more towards the understanding of uh, the transitory stage of the rural India in the contemporary world. 
So, with these things uh, and discussions, I think uh, that may be fruitful for you for better understanding about the things. Uh, thank you for the patient listenings and we will have further discussions uh, uh, through these deliberations once again. Thank you to all of you.